Well, it depends. If we, if we can get Pornhub on here, we can have the best list in like two minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's do it now. <laughs> Quick. Right. Oh, we're recording. <laughs> Oops. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We are the Nolaholics. As are you. As are you. All 30 of you now. Yay. Yay. So, welcome. hope you have your drinks. Yes, we indeed. Do. Welcome. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. And thank you for sticking with us. Um, right. right. So, <laughs> today, today. As the title of the video suggests. suggests <laughs> we are doing a top 10 Doctor Who episodes from the new series onwards. New series onwards. So, 2005 to now. Up until now. Um, At point of recording, Jodie Whittaker has been announced, but she's not actually fil filmed anything. We haven't seen her in anything so, yet apart from trailers. Obviously we're excluding her and anything on that. Yeah, so. so it's up until this point, up until Peter yeah. Capaldi's last episode. Um, yeah, and Twice Upon a Time. Was it Twice? Uh, oh it was, that was the Christmas episode. That uh, was Christmas episode, yeah. this was last episode. Yeah. Oh, miss you Peter. Hmm. Wonder if that's on the list. <laughs> mm. <laughs> or a bit, wonder if any Christmas episodes are on the list. Oh, yeah. the, spoilers. So we're doing this with a little bit of a twist in, in the mm. sense of that yeah. this isn't just a general top 10 list. This is our individual top 10 lists. Yeah. We haven't told each other about said we lists. We don't know. So no, this is actually your idea, which I yeah. thought worked out quite nicely. It's kind of, this is going to be quite entertaining because you get, I, I get to say what I think are good. And you can be like, fuck off. And then you get to say what you think you're good. I'm sure I won't say that. Well, and then it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you see what's on the fucking list? Well, yeah, well, we'll oh, oh no. No, I'm just, it'll make it a bit more interesting for everyone else because obviously there are a lot of very good people out there doing very good top 10 lists and that's great individually, but I think it'll be quite entertaining to have a kind of a top 10 reaction. Well, this, is, this, this is our attempt at doing one. And if this works, we'll do more of them. Yeah. It's like we, we, we might do a top ten worst. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. It's kind of, again, it comes down to how the list works. So. Yeah. And also, I think it makes more sense <coughs> because originally we were thinking of doing like just like a general top ten list, but then yeah. obviously we're two different people, believe it yeah. or not. Fun enough, who don't different always people can like different, different things, yeah. and it still be okay. They can actually, you know, have a difference of opinion, fandom. Yeah. And it's fine. Sort that shit. It's out. fine. Uh, so yeah, so what we'll do is I think well, how do you want to do it? Should we do well, should we flip a coin and see who goes first? Okay. Yeah. Hang on. We'll flip a coin and see who goes first. Yeah, Heads or tails? Uh, I'll go tails. Heads. So I'm going. Oh, first. so you're going first anyway. Right. right I'm cool. going first anyway. Right. So. All right. We, so we're doing it from. If I do ten, then you yeah. do your ten. Right. Okay. So. Number ten. Number ten. Jack. Mummy on the Orient Express. Oh, okay. No, no, that's I, 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 I like that. Yeah, Listen, it, I can. I, yeah, I, I sometimes forget about that episode. It, when I was going through my list and like putting bits and pieces together, it's kind of I was thinking about it, and it's like a bit of backstory. When I was putting together my list, I had twenty six episodes, and when I started crossing them off, it's like that one's not good. That one I enjoyed, but it's it's so objectively bad, I can't justify it. And then I got that. I got to this one. And it's like you know what. There is enough good stuff in this episode, and it's like there's certain moments. It's like you know what the doctor's like, you know what I could solve this in a minute if I knew what this thing looked like. I like, I, I do really like that episode from se season yeah. eight. It's one of the few gems in that season. Yeah. There's a part, there's a bit in it that really, he really just like he oozes Tom Baker yeah. in that episode. I think oh, when he's perfect. talking to himself in the train, and he's just sort of thinking. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, what about this? What about this? And it, it, it's. Yeah. It's very much uh, a, a very old school feeling yeah. episode. It's set on well, the Orient Express, but it's, obviously it's in space. It's a space train. It's a space version it's of a space it. Space train. Um, yeah, I think the, the, there's a lot of urgency in that episode, yeah. and I, I, I really I, lo I like the whole feel of it. So yeah, that's a yeah. good choice. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Frank Skinner's character, who seemed to know a he bit was more, alright. He was yeah. good. He, he let on a, his, his character seemed to be like a bit more. I know more than what's going on. And it's kind of, I don't yeah. know if that's just Frank Skinner being a bit like, <laughs> I'm in Doctor Who and I He's know, playing I, himself. I've read yeah. the script. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, the, I'm breaking the fourth wall here. But it was kind of like, with it, it was just enough within the realms that it's like, maybe he was someone who was on the inside. Yeah. But, you know, just enough. But even then, it's like, you know, it doesn't matter. The point is, it was a, I, enjoyed, I, I thought it was a fun episode. Yeah. There's a lot going on that was good. And the Doctor's kind of like, you know what? He got 60 seconds, what, no, 66 seconds to say, to work out what it was from the yeah. point. All he knew was it was a mummy. Yeah. And, and also, I think the. Um, like, 
done. It's a, it's a very he has to he has to be very cold, and he still is quite cold oh, up to that point. But he's like, all right, you're going to die in a minute. I just need to tell me this, and it's like, you're going to die. Tell me what I need to no, know. So yeah, others can and it's almost like, oh, you feel really bad for the person that's going to die, but yeah. obviously, it's like he has to sort of just dismiss that in his head, yeah, and just be like, look, I'm really sorry, but you know, you know, you're going to die. I've got to get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. It's kind of like you can't. Sometimes you can't save everyone. No. Everybody lives. Everybody lives. Sometimes. Yeah. That's right. not. That's not on my list. Just so you know. No. <laughs> okay. All right. You're going. So my number ten mm. uh, is Midnight, which is season four, David Tennant episode. Yeah. Uh, so I think this episode is so out of left field for a Russell T Davis episode. This is. It's yeah. really different from all the other sort of. And there's nothing wrong with this, but the very sort of uh, camp and colourful nature of his episodes mm. tend to be. This was a very much isolated episode, mm. um, and it's it's a Donna Light episode as well, which that's always a good thing. Which yeah, I mean, that were, I didn't <laughs> mind Donna, but I like I like the idea of how they've been doing like Doctor Light episodes until now, and then they thought, all right, let's have a let's have a companion light episode. Yeah, so Doctor Heavy, it's just the Doctor, Doctor Heavy, yeah. and it really puts him in a situation where. He he's not gonna. How is he gonna get out? He's literally on his on his own, is it, is it and the paranoia and the claustrophobia and it kind of it kind of evoked memories of uh, of the th- of the thing yeah. for me because it's like everyone's really suspicious of each other. The thing the thing that the doctor's trying to be like, well, I, I can help you because I'm smart, it's, oh, and everyone's like, oh, well, you just think we're done then. And it's kind of it very works works all the stuff he would normally say and do yeah. to make himself be to kind of get himself. Not in charge, but at least listened to by people. Yeah, isn't is all completely backfiring in the worst possible way. Yeah, uh. and uh, he it's like for once he doesn't have because he doesn't have the companion with him. Doesn't have the companion. He's used to relying on them. Yeah. He's used to relying on them to sort of bounce off of, and they can back him up and go. Well, hang on, yeah. no, he's like this. Or at least if he was going to be alienated, they would both be alienated by these yeah. people, and they might stand a better chance. It just shows the nature of humans. It's like yeah. oh. Well, he's the odd one out, so we're going to gang up on him. Yeah. And it's just, and the, the interaction between him and Sky Silvestri when the alien starts to take his words. Yeah. I think that was a really clever idea, and it was also really scary because the moment where she then overtakes him and she, and then he's copying her, you can see it in Tennant's face, or you can start to say, you can see it in the doctor's face, which is a really good performance yeah. from Tennant as a result. Yeah. He's like, you can, you can you, the audience is always saying, oh my God. You've taken over me, and I can't say it, but you've you, you've captured yeah. me basically. Yeah. And I think that was a really nice idea, rather than the usual, you know, standard fight the monster of the week and get rid of him. Yeah. It's like it's like a sort of like possession yeah. almost. Yeah, it's it's not a dude in a costume. It's a person. It's it, it is a person. It's just something you don't. It's the it's, unseen. Yeah, it, yeah, the unseen is always a lot scarier than stuff you can see. Okay. <laughs> Um, my number nine. Um, I, this had to be on the list somewhere. Yeah. Um, I put it here. Um, Day of the Doctor, the fiftieth oh, anniversary one. See, that is on my list as well. Spoilers, but it's yeah. a little bit higher up. But is it, yeah, is go, it, over, um, go ahead. This is it. I mean, the reason this didn't get higher was because it was very. It felt very by the numbers, rather than. Now, this is not to discredit the episode in itself. It's a very, very good episode, and I really enjoyed it, all of it all the way through. Yeah. It just had two flaws that kept it from being higher up the list. One, it was very by the numbers. It felt like a fairly standard episode. Rough with, it felt like it's a standard multi-doctor story. You could basically, if you ha- if you were to lose, say, you've got three doctors: the War Doctor, John Hurt, the Tenth Doctor slash Eleventh Doctor, however you count it, which is uh, David Tennant, and the Eleventh slash Twelfth Doctor, depending on how you count it, of Matt Smith. It's kind of, but the thing is, you could probably lose two of them. And still have the exact same story, and it. This the sad thing is, you could really interchange any of the three of them, even with John Hurt's Doctor being a lot more difficult or anti-social because of these his experiences at that point in time. Even then, it's kind of like this is not to discredit John Hurt's performance. It's like he's the reason he's on, he's the reason it's on the list. That's the first the first thing. It's kind of it was a bit like you know a bit too by the numbers, and the second thing was the Zygon sort of bits and pieces to it it's kind of you spent a bit too long on that if this is meant to be wrapping up the time war if you had like you know when you know you have David Tennant like flirting with the Queen of England Elizabeth the first back, <laughs> back in uh, pre, pre, you know, God, it's prehistoric God Tennant's always got to get his women in doesn't he yeah but it's like, if you had that and that was the moment you had with the Zygon 
And it's like, you know what, that would have been fine. But it's like, you know, then it's like, the Zygons come back, it's like, oh yes, haha, we were hiding in paintings. It's like, okay, you're taking away from the the more important storyline of what's happened to Gallifrey, what's going on with the Daleks and the Time War, because that's basically what the 50th anniversary was doing. It was putting it to bed and being a homage to everything Doctor Who, at least up to that point. That's why you had uh, Tom Baker come back as the oldest living Doctor. Um, but then it's like, you know, that that's a nice way of sort of capping it in a really good way. But then, again, like I said, it's like, a few, a few things to take out, but you know what, still very good, very happy with it, enjoyed it a lot. The reason why I'm not saying much is because I'm going to give my counter-argument to that when we get to the point of where it is on my list. That's fine. Um, That's fine. But as, uh, I agree with you on a few things. Sorry for the unprofessionalism here. I can't actually remember what number nine was. Uh, I did not like that. So, oh, yeah. Oh, Homes are great. Yes, right. Number nine uh, is a Matt Smith story from his first season. And this is what I was talking about you earlier, about yeah. two-parters. Oh, yeah? Because number nine is the Time of Angels. Ooh. So it's the first part, not Flesh and Stone, but the first part, Time of Angels. Yeah. Now the reason why I've put that in, and I've dismissed Flesh and Stone, is because Time of Angels, for me, is a much better episode. Yes. Now it's the same story, don't get me wrong, but I just think that first part is some of Doctor Who at his best. Yes. So you've got, you've done, you've got this new Doctor in Matt Smith, who up until this point, up, he's, he's been in about four or five episodes and then you get to like this story you reintroduce the, the Weeping Angels one of the most iconic new and overall villains I think they're like in Doctor Who history the list now. Yeah. it's like they're up there it's only like you know the Daleks the Cybermen and like the Master who are above them at this point really yeah exactly he actually filmed this episode first yeah so it's like look at how good his performance is he came out of the blocks with this story, and he fucking yeah. nailed every moment of it, I think. Well, this part, anyway. He came out running, he did great. Yeah, I think the idea of the Weeping Angels now not is, is they're not, they don't just take your life force, it's like they become, they, whatever, whatever holds the image of an angel is itself an angel. I really like that idea. Yeah. Um, I like the dynamic of bringing, then bringing back River Song, because then you get to see him, in, you get to see her interact with a new Doctor, and it's interesting to see how that dynamic worked. There's some, there's some horrible bits in this story, uh, like when the uh, some of the guys get their necks broken and they're following in. They're, yeah. Well, it kind of it kind of leads into the second part with the whole the cracking the cracking time thing, which yeah. kind of lets it down for me a little bit in the second part. Yeah. But I, I just think this is a, a really strong it's opener a of a two-parter yeah. for Matt Smith. The Weeping Angels are as strong as they've ever been. So, yeah, Matt Smith is sort of in his stride. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I just think in that in that sort of area of the series, I think it was really good. I know it was very good. It's like, oh, I completely agree. It's like the first episode was great. The second episode kind of laid it down a little bit because when you look at the second episode of how it, when they kind of start to explain things, it's like, well, if the Doctor wasn't there at all, you know, you take him a complete, you take him and Amy out of the equation completely, everything else would have completely resolved itself. Regardless, and yeah, that's, that's the sad thing, and I, that's not how a story should end. But I just think, I just think, it, definitely, it, I just think it took up. away from from the sort of excitement and uh, yeah. and trepidation of the first part by making it more about the the season arc as a whole. With when the soldiers are going towards like the light and stuff, and then they forget who 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 were. There was intrigue there, yeah, but. Um, you get you know, erased from then, existence once you touch the t the time yeah, exactly. from the crack, and uh, and yeah. uh, I think that that whole that whole thing. As the season went on, got a bit yeah. for me. Just just that standalone part, I thought it was. I thought it was very strong. Oh yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no one of the strongest that. episodes of that season. No, no I agree. So, okay. um, episode eight on the list I've got here is Magician's Apprentice uh, slash, which is familiar, two parter. Ah, oh, so from season nine. Season nine. Yeah. Um, the reason I've got this is, first of all, I like me a good. I, I do like a good da a Dalek story. Okay. Yeah. The Daleks are overused at the moment. I won't disagree. Yeah. Now. We all, for those who of you in the know or have watched any of our previous videos, you'll know the reason, which is basically that there's a contract that BBC have had to sign that says that the Daleks have to appear at least once in every series. As part of the Terranation Estate. Yeah. yeah. So it's Whether that's still going on now, I don't know, because, yeah. and this could be just them, you know, yeah. smoke and mirrors, but Chibnall, I think, has gone on record as saying there won't be any Dalek stories. This is, it's or any kind of Daleks, but then, you know, Moffat lied, so he probably does. 
Yeah, yeah, it's like the thing is, it might be it might be that they have to do like and even when they did those four specials for that year, they had they had to do a Dalek reference. And but then it was just like a thirty second thing. It's like, oh look, the Dalek came, looked at this girl, then just instead of yeah. went off. And so that was the telling. It has to have an appearance like at some point, even if it's for two yeah. minutes. Yeah, exactly. So. But the thing is, I love this story because it, it starts off this age old question of like, if you had a time machine, would you go back in time and kill baby Hitler? That's a good way of putting it, yeah. It's that's, kind exactly, of like, that's exactly what it is really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what it is. He's, he meets Charles Davros. Yes, he does. And it's kind of, you don't know Davro, the Charles Davros right at the beginning, but once you get to the point, it's like, oh, okay, crap, it is Charles Davros. This is the guy who creates the Daleks, the worst force of genocidal evil across the entire universe. Yeah, he's, he's basically a universal Hitler. He is universal Hitler. Yeah. Now, the Doctor doesn't even have to kill him. The Doctor just has to turn around and walk away. This kid's trapped in a minefield full of hand mines. And it's, yeah, play on words there. Yeah. Well done, Moff. <laughs> Hands that come out of the mud with eyeballs on the, on the palms. <laughs> I mean, the image, the image of it is the image of it's quite imagery. creepy. Oh, it's yeah. creepy imagery. Um, Fantastic. But then the name of it is like... Oh, all right. is, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting like a technical term like that. No, but you didn't have to have any names. You could have just seen. You could have just it's like had that come out of the ground. Not even caught. Caught just, it. Anything. Just two episodes, basically getting to the point of one of, of the whole thing. And it's like you've got the ma- you've got the master or Missy at this point in time because uh, the master had become a woman, um, which was fine. I really like Michelle Gomez. She was great. Um, she's Michelle Gomez is fantastic in everything. Michelle she's Gomez in. is just lovely. She's really. Great. She um, really is. Michelle Gomez is a woman I'd like to buy. A pint for, uh, not necessarily. Oh, she wants to uh, wine. She, no, I can, I can imagine her down the pub having a few pints. I can. I reckon she. I reckon she'd be quite a good laugh. I, she'd be a great laugh, and it's like you know what? I'll buy you a drink. I'll buy you several drinks. You know, I'm more than happy to do that. Well, no, she, she would buy drinks because she's fucking Doctor Who. Well, she, we're she, not. Yeah, she, 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 <laughs> she, she got no. Yeah, problem. she can like have the privilege of being mentioned in our videos. There we yeah, go. <laughs> with all, all thirty, <laughs> with all thirty subscribers. subscribers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> privilege is all yours. Yes. Yeah. She was great, and it's kind of like you got this little bit right at the beginning, just after that bit with, da- with Child Davros. You get this little bit at the beginning where it's kind of they're trying to locate the, uh, where um, Davros is trying to locate the Doctor. But you don't know it's Davros at that point. He's using the the Saint Man. I can't remember what his name is. So oh like the yeah. Set. And it's like he go he goes to a few different locations, things you've seen before to before this point. And it's things like uh, he goes to the uh, Shadow Proclamation, spa- the Space Police. Oh yeah, they had to ring that one back in there. They brought that one back in. Five like, years. Your was. kind is not welcome here. I'm here for the doctor. Well, yeah, because the mystery is that we don't know the doctor's gone missing. Yeah, the doctor's gone missing. And it's like, okay, why yeah. has he gone missing? Why has he gone missing? And it's kind of like they reveal the only re- revelation that he's actually gone missing at all is actually in the little teaser advert leading up to this episode, which is actually really quite clever. With the sisterhood of Khan. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like so. I liked that. I liked that lead into this. And then it's like when you get into the episode proper, so it's like. The Doctor, okay, he was in medieval England, playing an electric guitar on a tank for medieval England people. Awesome. He was basically having a midlife crisis. He was a bit That's like, you know, the 40-year-old, 45-year-old dude. who has start, 14 start, starts, starts to get yeah. like a, yeah, starts <laughs> to get, you know, buys himself a leather jacket and a motorcycle and sunglasses. It's kind of like, that's the kind of vibe I was so, getting. Yeah, dude, you're 50, grow up. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, you're 2000, grow up. <laughs> they gently reintroduce the dialects, and then when you get into the second part of the episode, you get some really great moments. You've got great moments between Missy and Clara. So Clara having to deal with a Time Lord who's just as clever and... If not more so. If not more so. Yeah. And more cunning and more articulate than the Doctor. But just a bit mad. But just mad. Yeah. And it's kind of... It's like you've got the whole thing, like, consider the Doctor. The theme I get from the episode is friendship. Yeah. So it's like, obviously, you've got the, Cla- you've got the Doctor and Clara, friends. Or the Doctor and the Master were best friends and they're trying to be friends again sort of thing yeah. um, and then even to a really 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 strange point you've got the Doctor and Davros yeah. on, a, on a level with each other like they're yeah. two old tired men who've had enough of this shit yeah. do you know what I mean and well so as, as well you think that Davros has had enough of this shit but you know what I mean the theme is kind of like oh let's just forget about it you know there's a kind of like an understanding there a companionship yeah. almost you do your thing I've been doing my thing can we just, you know, why don't we just leave let's, it alone? Let, let's just put all the guns down. Let's just turn and say, like, look, you went one down one way, I went another. Yeah, you left me behind. And then it goes back to the beginning of the episode yeah. where he was a kid. It's like, yeah. you know, you and left me behind and this is what I turn into, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, this, and the thing is, that's the, that's the thing that gets me. Because it's kind of like, you know what? I, I know that Davros is evil. We all know that he is evil. He looked, he, if you haven't seen what he looks like, just look up, just type in Davros into Google. 
and you get a picture of him. He looks evil. Yeah. He's a he is the stereotypical mad scientist in a fucking wheelchair with a metal hand. It's he he is evil. He is profit. Well, all you need to do is watch Genesis of the Daleks to work that one out. Yeah. The, the thing is, though, we all know he's evil. But I was I I was that close to believing he was genuinely like repentant because he was on his deathbed. Well, yeah, and they did the whole and kind then of. And they do the switchery with it. Yeah, but stuff. you know what? It really reminded me of the bit where he goes, "Oh, I, I want to, I want to look on you with my own eyes." It reminded me of Return of the Jedi. If Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, let me look on you with my own eyes. Let me look on you with my eyes. Yeah, and I thought, I thought actually that was quite a good touch, and then they were, then they started laughing. It's like, you are not a very good doctor, are you? And they, they kind of like, they kind of just they forget get, about it. For they get into jovial bands yeah. that makes you think and that they're I actually they're thought, okay. yeah, I thought, oh, that's really good. But I knew in the back of my mind, I was like, there's something not quite right here. Yeah. And, then in the, and then he ends up going, you know, taking his... He gives mm. him some life force, and he's like, that's all I needed, doctor! Ha, 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 ha. That's where it kind of... It, that's why it kind of falls down for me a little bit. It's kind of, mm, yeah. yeah. So you knew he was going to do that the whole time, and the doctor knew that you knew he was going to do that the whole time. This is it. That is it's like uh, that is the flaw of the episode. Yeah. And it's ultimately it's kind of like and you've got Dalek, Dalek, what Daleks, uh, fucking souls in walls, whatever it was. Oh, no, basically, Daleks don't die. Oh yeah, so they're part of the sewers. Yeah, yeah that's they just it. basically chuck the, the the Daleks that are like so old and decrepit they can't do shit into the sewers. Yeah. And that's what basically makes the Dalek sewers up. It's basically aging, so old Daleks they can't do anything. They are, yeah, yeah, but, but if it, you touch them, they'll try and but grab you. But Daleks have, have been killed before, many times. Oh, yeah, you kill them lazy. Well, they just they don't all, die, all they're they're just, they're just, old age. Oh, they old age. That was yeah. something that was just introduced in that episode. Yeah. Yeah. This is it's kind of lots of good banter, a, a compelling story. With ask, uh, which is kind of answering the age-old question of should you kill baby Hitler? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's, asking that, that side of it I really liked, and the, the, you know, the dart I thought the dart was quite good. They kind of played second fiddle again in that story for me, but yeah. I did. I thought Julian Julian Bleach was amazing as Davros once again. I mean, he's considering he's not he's not played that part in how many years? Six, seven years? Six, seven maybe years longer time. since the last time, and he just nailed it. Immediately yeah. again, and um, it made me believe that he was the original Davros. So props to him. I thought he oh, was definitely. great. Capaldi was great. Yeah. Um, I think the everyone... conclusion not so much for me, but the yeah. the first part for me. First part definitely was better. Almost all of the second part. There's a few iffy things towards the conclusion, but I think that's true of most things. Yeah, yeah. To wrap that's up the, the sort of problem story. with these two parts. Yeah. Um, but I loved I loved the um, yeah. the cliffhanger of the end of the part where he goes back. Because obviously Davros has now got the Daleks and he's about to kill Clara. He goes, right, run, run as far as you can, see how far you'll get, etc. Mm. And so he again, obviously the Doctor then jumps into the ties, goes back to where he was a kid and then gets his Dalek weapon and goes, yeah. exterminate! And I was like, ooh, he's actually, is he's, he actually going to do it? He's actually going to do he's it. He's going to kill, get on. Like, got, that, is, that is really cool. The I did like got, that. The Doctor's got a gun aimed at kid Davros, so baby Hitler, he's going to shoot him in the face. Just, oh, just to stop him from, like, it wasn't a case of, it was almost another, it kind of harks back to the, do I have the right moment. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, so it, oh, no, that's a fair choice. Yeah, and it's like, well, last thing I'll say on it before we go on to your one for number seven, sorry, number eight. Is it number was, eight? Yeah, it is number yeah, eight, isn't it? Was uh, the Doctor playing electric guitar on a tank. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we both, we both, we both like rock. We both yeah. like Doctor. We both like Doctor playing rock. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought it was fine. <laughs> right. right, sticking with Peter Capaldi, we're going back to his first season. Yeah. Um, and we're going with Listen. Now, Ooh. I really enjoyed this episode uh, for several reasons. First of all, it was the first episode of that season that I thought Capaldi had really settled into to the role. Yeah. I mean, he opens up with that monologue about um, when he's under the water and he's going on about, you know, what 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 does the uh, the voice in the back of the, and the you know in the back of your head yeah. and like the, the voices and like the shadows and things like that. And yeah. it it really goes back to that kind of it harks back to your sort of childhood. Childhood nursery fears. fears, yes, basically, um, and uh, so I really loved the opening segment to that. Mm. Um, I also really like the fact that they kind of, which they never followed up on, which isn't this episode's fault. It's just Stephen Moffat's fault afterwards for not following this up. The I, the whole awesome pink time traveling idea. Yeah, because I thought Danny Pink, okay, meh, bit of a wet fish, but he was all right. Mm. But the fact that they, you know, introduced like, you know, his descendant. Yeah. To basically come back, which would then help this kid and the story move along as, yeah. as it was. Um, I thought it was 
See, the problem, up until this point, Stephen Moffat had only been writing episodes as just, you know, the showrunner episodes. So he'd be writing the first two parts, first the two last parts. two parts, maybe one in the middle. Yeah. It was kind of getting like that. This, for me, was the first episode he'd written that would reminded me of the Stephen Moffat of old. Yes. Where he was writing for Russell T. Davis. So he, it had yeah. that really sort of chilling, you know, like, like we said, childhood yeah. horror. It was all about, yeah. you know, monsters under the bed. He was you know, going for the joy of it. Yeah, rather than, rather than, than just, this is what I have to do. And yeah. uh, they're going to like the the boarding school, the children's home, wherever yeah. it was, where where young, well, you assume it's young Danny, or young Orson is. Always yeah. being scared of the dog, that's where, where all the bad things happen. Yeah. And gets a little slap on the head from Kyra. It's like, he's still kind of settling in. Yeah. He's, he's still grumpy doctor. He's and still I quite liked doctor. that at the time. He just he, kind of just like missed. grumpy Peter Yeah, Calvary. it was basically, he, he was, was still good. doctor... Dr. Tucker at that point. Yeah. Um, but just the whole feel of the episode just felt really like odd and and it, and it became a bit more epic towards the end because they linked it back to the Doctor's childhood with yeah. like the flashback to John Hurt going come you know going coming back from Gallifrey going to that one go, farmhouse go, going to the farmhouse where he was where he was a kid. And I thought it kind of spoilers, linked Spoilers, by the way. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's four years ago. If you're watching Catch up. This now, yeah, exactly. Especially this video with this list in mind. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the whole their fear is a superpower. And it's like... What's that, hiding under your bed? Yeah, I think that the whole niche of that, okay, you can argue, oh, God, so basically Clara made the Doctor. It's like, well, no. He told he, her... He, he told, told her, her the speech that she retold to him. him. So technically, he still told it first. It's the bootstrap yeah. paradox. Where exactly. Where come from. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I thought this was one of the, 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 the few highlights. Not on any... Not fault of I thought it was one of the few highlights from his first season. Because no, overall, I, think, I didn't yeah. enjoy it that much. But like I say, for me, this was... This was like Stephen Moffat going back to just writing Doctor Who as opposed to, I'm the showrunner and I have yeah. to write Doctor Who. Um, so yeah. yeah that's my reason for thing. number eight this is, thing, cause, uh, this is it listen didn't make it onto my list and the main reason for it was they basically blue balls you with it it's kind of you get you get the moment in the orphanage that you were talking about or yeah. the, uh, the, the little home for the kids or whatever it was and there is clearly something sitting on the bed on the bed under the blanket yeah but and, I mean it's that kind of yeah, but ambiguity, then it's, but it's really kind of. But like, then they go into this whole thing later on, where it's kind of. Like, oh, there was, there was nothing there, there to begin with, and it's like, well. But that's that's like the, that's you can almost say that's the, that's, the, that's my the whole problem for it. For yeah, me. no, fair it's kind of, that that breaks it for me because it's either either there's nothing there, which it can be very compelling if done the right way, which but they were a, doing. But uh, to a child's eye and a child's mind, there is something there. Yeah, but so then, I think that's what the idea is. But then what took the blanket? Well, we don't know, do we? That's the mystery behind it, isn't it? Yeah, but the thing is, if there was nothing there, the blanket would still be there. Well, yeah, and then, true. Then you, then you see the reflection that there is clearly like something that looks a bit like a. Maybe it was the alien from midnight. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah, no. from midnight. Yeah, a bit <laughs> into <what's> <laughs> yeah. 